Hello and welcome to this match uh, from a Monday night tournament at Face to Face Games here in Toronto uh, about, a, about a month ago now. Uh, my name is Travis Provick. And I'm Shane Ruman. And uh, yeah, we're doing some uh, after after action recording here. Uh, I'm actually playing here on the left, so Travis on the left, uh, playing against Matthew on the right. And this is this is the third round of the tournament. I think uh, maybe I think we are both one and one at this point. Um, so yeah, I'm playing uh, a, a slightly tweaked version of the Hyperloop deck. Um, this is actually the last time that I ever play that deck. Uh, for reasons that I will explain as we go. I just wrote that down too, by the way. Yeah, that's the last time I ever. Uh, it was it was the look at, on Matthew's face at the end of the game that uh, really kind of put me over the edge. <laughs> uh, and then, kind of standard Veers Django aggro on the right. Um, you can see he's already got a blaster pistol onto Django. Um, both the hired guns are rolled in. Uh, I Travis just discarded to roll again. I suspect. I, I don't remember very clearly, but I suspect he's looking for, uh, or I am looking for a resource so that I can uh, get the Falcon in on turn one. Taking the yeah. resource, that, ex that probably is an accurate assessment. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that he chose to gun up, I think, I believe, and I was uh, uh, Veers first, and then didn't roll Django in response to the second higher gun. You often see people not roll Django, especially in a three-character matchup, um, on the first activation because they want to get an, um, an upgrade on him but then he's so waiting here, yeah i'm just gonna interrupt real quickly uh i played a, a hit and run oh. so that i could roll uh poe in and uh use his dice so i claim the battlefield which is the emperor's throne room which means that i can uh, change one of the dice to a special side and immediately resolve it so i do that using poe's ability to uh, discard the millennium falcon um, triggering the two resource side in the Falcon, giving me a total of five resources, which lets me put the Falcon into play, and, and that's the end of my turn. Yeah, and hit runs are really great in both cases, against Django and for Poe. Although, I have to admit, uh, I'm impressed by your bravery, leaving, because um, you, you often want to at least fake that you have a control card, of course, with no resources, uh, with all those rerolls, because that's Django Veers, the cards are really just rerolls for damage, so you... You, you kind of have to um, wait with bated breath <laughs> to see how much she's coming your way after the pass. It, it's tough to do because you don't really want to give that opportunity to uh, to kill the Poe dice. There's lots of different ways that it could get used before you're able to trigger it with the throne room. So right. you really want to get things rolling. Um, so the way that things get rolling with this deck is getting the Falcon out and being able to use the Falcon special ability with the Emperor's throne room. Um, usually to play hyperspace jump from your discard, which will end the turn and gives you the opportunity to switch the battlefield, which may be important if you don't get to start with your own battlefield, uh, so you can get the throne room in play. But it basically lets you say, ah, you've ro rolled too well, um, let's let's try again next turn. Yeah, and the other, and the thing that makes the extra sauce on top of that, that makes it even more difficult, um, to battle this deck once it gets going, and obviously Travis did an excellent job of getting going by turn two, that's as fast as it's, it's going to happen, is the cunning, uh, which leads to a lot of debates about who you kill first in this matchup. Do you yeah. kill Poe, or do you kill um, Hired Guns, actually, some people think, because you want to get rid of the cunning, because then you only have to control one dice, not right. two. So uh, I did play a dug in to get three shields onto Poe. Uh, we get to see a F-11 rifle on um, Django. And a backup muscle as well over on that side of the table. So this is the this is the one pro the, the worst matchup obviously is Django with this deck because as soon as you roll a character and maybe do something more than just your hyperloop, uh, they can relax react with Django to at least get some yeah his damage especially when he's loaded up. Um, him definitely uh, Vader is someone who can also sometimes get this deck. Uh, in its most degenerate form of uh, end of turn, end of turn, end of turn, end of turn. At least he's causing an active mill. Yeah. But there's not many other answers, to tell you the truth. So, yeah. So I, I just explaining how Hyperloop works <laughs> uh, to Matthew here and as I activate it with the Falcon. And he is doing the right thing and making sure you're not a liar. How, how could this be made into the game? He's always wondering. Yeah. So 
I probably am not ag- as aggressive with the Hyperloop because I, I feel guilty every time. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you, you're, all your dice aren't blank. I'm going to not. I, I'm going to make you re-roll. Um, but it, even even without being the most kind of ruthless version, it's still such a pain to play again. Oh, natural specialty. Yeah, and the Falcon with the special in this deck as well. I th- are you playing Scavenge? I think you're playing Scavenge, right? Absolutely, there's a Scavenge. Yeah, deck. so you can even do you know less exotic stuff like uh, scavenging back the um, second chances over and over again. Things that are equally annoying. Maybe not Maybe not equally, but close no. to annoying. <laughs> yeah, so you have the second chances that can keep the hired guns out, preferably mm-hmm. when they already have a cunning on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could also do that with if Poe's uh, checking thermal detonators. Uh, you recur that a few times. So, yeah, Veers just rolled in with a pretty dangerous roll. Um, uh, and you have the special. See, here's where I think you're being a nice guy because that could erupt into a lot of Django damage, um, right? He's showing, he's showing plus four. He's showing plus four, but I, I haven't necessarily rolled into Django yet. So I'm yeah. playing some Cunnings. You want to get has some extra through, resources. Yeah. So a- as long as he doesn't have a way to do it, then that's not so much of a problem. So I couldn't roll anyone here. It's just too much of a risk. risk. Okay. So, But why both on the same hired gun? Well, so the, the opportunity... Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Travis no, getting the dubious re- pleasure re- of reconsidering his own... Doing- commentating his own game <laughs> reconsidering and getting the heck out of there why i'm putting on the same one because you can put a second chance it just means you want to get as much out of a single roll as you can mm-hmm. because generally what will happen is you'll only get uh, a, a single roll to compare about whether you want to use any of those dice versus your opponent's roll mm-hmm. yeah although in this case you only have no i see just I, I definitely understand what you're saying it I think it'd be a little counterintuitive for some people watching why I put on the same one, but with the second chance factor, it's just the spe- number of specials you have. At, I guess you have Poe's special for the cunning and the F11 and the Millennium and the obvious one, obviously. Yeah. So rolling out the cunning specials um, are a little limited right now, and it will be against Django Veers. They have no specials of really any note. The other thing you, the other thing that's an advantage of putting both cunnings on the same person mm-hmm. is when they have a um, some kind of dice elimination. Mm-hmm. They can get rid of one of your cunnings. They can t- get rid of your the possibility of a falcon proc, mm-hmm. but they can only get rid of one of them. So you still have one in place. So you can always kind of threaten that jump. Yeah. And it's, uh, I guess, an action uh, efficiency thing where you can, if they do both come up special somehow, you can resolve them both in time after one activation. So, yeah. So you got a little bit of damage here. Uh, yeah, five. Five coming through is, is uh, pretty decent. Yeah, so... Poe's Poe's got a lot of health, though. It's always annoying about Poe, if he's worth the points. The question is whether you stay focused on Poe or whether you try to get rid of that hired gun. Uh, He may have played a tactical mastery here. I'm guessing that's where the the resource went. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, Not only am I playing here, uh, I was helping with the video production as well, so... To get the best view of the dice we could, we tried to bring the camera in as close as possible. So the the, the field of play is a little narrower than it is yeah. a little bit comfortable here. He's exploded up to nine. So that's pretty impressive, even for Django Veers. Yeah. Um, so he does go for the Poe, but I, I definitely see your point that I mean, he'd already put a lot of work to it, but he could have taken out that second gun with two cunnings on it. Yes. So I think it's a bit of a misplay on his part, but you get focused on one guy, right? It's very difficult. Well, so now I'm in the situation where there's not much threat for the rest of the turn. Mm-hmm. So I could potentially try to get as much as I can done in this particular round. Yeah, I mean, you can you have him rolled in the Falcon. That's potentially a lot of damage. And those guys, if you have money, are, can go three three or two each yeah. pretty easily. The higher guns, that is. A mill. It's not bad in this situation. It's not terrible, but it's not what... I really need. I mean, he's not going to be re-rolling very much. I'm not going to be milling him out. Probably not going to be milling him out. I, I don't know if I totally agree he'd be re-rolling or not, because he doesn't want money or shields. They do nothing for so him. So, here's a probe. He's going to look at two cards and discard any events. So, it looks like a, a Falcon in a second chance, I think that was. And Django has three upgrades on him, and that's all. Mainly the character is going to be upgrading all yeah. the time. So I don't know what he's going to be doing with his dice for the rest of the game. I mean his cards, <laughs> to be honest, other than re-rolling. 
Uh, so that was the other hired gun, which I forgot to exhaust. Oh, yeah. It's unfortunate you ended up with the fourth mill on the cunning. Or the fourth discard, sorry. Yeah, mill is a... It's a slightly different concept, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I took one of the resources. Really, probably should be trying just trying to re-roll here. So the interesting question, though, is that, and probably running through your mind, is it fine, you have you have the Millennium Falcon, and you have the Throne Room. That setup is good, but you're losing on damage. So you can't go to time, right? Right. So you need to come up with some way to actually swing that. That That is a good point. Um, you just... And depending on how the dice roll out, it, it could be impossible for you to get there before time. Mm -hmm. Because the Falcon is probably your main potential for damage. Uh, the higher guns are pretty good too. Yeah. But you want to, you, using that dice for damage takes away, well, you have a cunning. So you actually, yeah, you probably could just roll on the Falcon and see what you get and then try to whittle away that right. way. Uh, the other thing uh, to note here is uh, the store was running this tournament, I think, with 40 minute rounds. So there's a little bit of mm -hmm. extra time in a round. Uh, this was, I think, the, the, the official rules had come out not too long before this. And they had, they, I think they had had previously published round times on the uh, invite on Facebook, so they didn't want to change it. Yeah, because he's at 13 damage, and he can always just back up muscle for easy stuff at the beginning of your turn. So, yeah, you almost have to kill them both to beat that, <laughs> right. that amount of damage. Okay, I'm spending a resource here, or not spending a resource here. So I do decide to mill out his, or to make him discard his hand. Mm hmm I think it may have been worth a re-roll there. Covering the battlefield. So I, I see that I don't have great dice at the moment, so I am going to uh, claim the battlefield and jump to hyperspace just so that I have that option at the beginning of my turn. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, no, I, he has no more action class. Sorry. That is absolutely incorrect. I am using the blaster rifle special. So he can choose to deal two damage yeah. to any of his characters. And it makes sense. He picked fear. Right? No, not... he put, took two, oh, he two, took two, two shields, shields off. Here. There you go. Sorry. Django had three shields. So, yeah. There's definitely, I think, probably more sophisticated uh, players that use this this hyperloop deck a little bit more efficiently um but I, I think it still has a problem if you know huge amounts of damage come out so wow. actually you don't even need your you're rolling that <laughs> pretty but you're just leave rolling that millennium falcon special by itself it's actually terrible I, I by itself yeah i want the option to be able to do something else right i much prefer to be able to uh threaten damage with rolling in so So. Yeah, one of the two gun sides for sure. Yeah, like he's the just... shields might help. Uh, shields would, wouldn't be bad, but it's that. So he's rolling in veers. Uh, he's got a special. I don't have any on the on the hunt, but they have no shields, so it's yeah. not really an issue. You're not gonna have any. Uh, it looks like just one damage, so not the not the scariest roll. Well, any black dice can be pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> given, given the F eleven Ds and the DH seventeens and everything with the modifiers coming through the other way. So I do put a second chance there to make sure those cuttings are going to stay alive. I mean, on the hunt, he just wants more dice. So I definitely, I agree with it. But at the same time, it is something to think about. He gave you another, I mean, not great special, but if he ever digs in for three shields, a cunning onto the, on the hunt with a dice removal is not bad, actually. Yeah. Not a bad option for you. So I don't know if the on the hunt was that worth it for him, but he gets the dice removal too. But he can't get rid of the Millennium Falcon with it. So so he is going to, uh, he doesn't like you to get rid of the Falcon die. Mm -hmm. So I roll in with the hired gun with the Cunnings. And he reacts with uh, rolling Django in. Yeah, and you have a, a one discard and a two for a dollar. Django got some damage, but doesn't explode on you. No, his oh, damage is like not. four. Yeah, going. so it's four total. Not the end of the world. Uh, 
really like to have something to work with here. We're going to put that damage on the other hired gun, it looks like. Oh, the power of second chance. Which is kind don't of fun with me, because that, that die is probably mostly wasted at this point. Yeah. Unless I'm going to take an extended turn to try to do something here. Oh, you're getting, <laughs> you're getting other ideas about a win condition for you. I'm just <laughs> considering what the what what the pot potential options are. I mean, you do have the one discard from from the last one. So you really want to reroll all of your cards? Are in... Can't think of that many cards for you that are that great either. You don't have a lot of money playing the big supports. And a resource, which is, yeah, no, exactly what he was looking for. <laughs> the other 50%. Oh, that's great. Nice. So let's see what uh, what Mass is going to do with his action here. Yeah, he's uh, discarded a card and just considering what he wants to reroll. He's going to reroll everything. Looks like some good damage. Yes. So in this case, yeah, I was about to say that I can, yeah, he, I mean, it gets to be frustrating and you don't know exactly what to do um, as the opponent. There, I might have backup muscled just to get it off because yeah, he he knew you were going to, or he, he'd have a pretty good idea you would do that if he got any way a decent roll. You almost kind of want a middling roll. It's like yeah, but one and two damage and then... Rolling first means that I, I didn't, didn't do anything else with my dice. That's true. But did you ha you had a discard showing? I think was the only thing you yeah. had a, a go. And he is ahead of the damage, so I guess he he can wait pretty much just as long as you can wait. Yeah. yeah, playing this deck against Django is way more frustrating than playing against anyone else. Um, there's obviously ways. To no take... one's crying. Yeah, no one's no one's crying. <laughs> um, But if, if the other, where it's kind of card-based, uh, like ambushes and other extra actions, it's a lot rarer to kind of get killed before you can dodge out of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in here, I decided that that roll is a little too good. I may have also just decided that I wanted to get up to five resources. Now, did you play it much against Han Ray? Because Han Ray has a similar type of, you know, cheating out actions. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think I really only played it this one tournament. Yeah. And I, I can't remember who all my matchups were. I, I think I was actually another Elite Gears, Elite Django, and... Which was very popular in mid-January, for sure, um, before they kind of switched over to the Bala. Um, variants of the Django troop, Trooper for three character yeah. troops. Which, seeing this deck just pound out the damage, <laughs> it kind of seems strange at this point now. Like, the Django, everyone's kind of forgotten about Django for years, but it's it's still a very, well, just very difficult deck to beat. The, the, the challenge is if you don't get some of those rolls, then you, you're just you're dead so quickly. True. No, I definitely agree there that the extra six health is, is a big deal, and Bala is very well costed for what he gets, yeah. uh, especially when you're going against other two or th three plus lists. But uh, Veers is pretty consistent, um, and it does run two Duggins, and surprising a number of card control cards. That's the interesting thing about the meadow, uh, not the meadow, the, the first sort of one card pool, is that this is a pure aggro deck, but compared to other card games, it has a lot of control cards in it. Right. Like It's not just loaded with burn cards. I mean, it probably will be two or three sets down the line. Right. But right now, you know, you got your dug ins, you got your, you know, he doesn't like you and electroshocks and all sorts of things like that. So, yeah, at this point in the match, I'm feeling like a dick. <laughs> it's like, why am I playing this deck? This is not fun for anyone. Oh, there's no damage. There's no. There's a damage modifier. Maybe I can do something else. <laughs> of 
course, this was a discard not on screen. It's difficult to guess what I've done. There are there are no good guys in this match. There you also have Django, who's going to cheat out his damage no matter what you do. Took away his blanks. What? He didn't play. I mean, daring escape is about the only thing I could think. But oh, you yeah, have to re-roll for that. Escape. Oh, you did do a daring escape. Okay. But if he, you didn't get him re-roll any dice? Maybe I forgot that part? You might have forgot that part. Or maybe you didn't want to take it off the uh, one shield and the and the, the blue. Yeah. Thermal detonator. Spicy. Right? Well, especially since you can get it for free. Yeah. You just gotta roll. You gotta be brave enough to roll the guy in. <laughs> Now, the, one of the best times in, in Destiny is, of course, to, to cunning someone else's thermal detonator. Oh, yeah. That is just brilliant. It's it, Yeah, it's good because it forces the thermal detonator to discard um, even though they're not getting the benefit. Yeah, so you've literally pulled the pin on someone else's thermal detonator in their camp, causing all the damage, and they lose three oh. resources worth of upgrades. Is there a second chance? No, there's a second chance. Oh, good times. And of course, another backup muscle. So, <laughs> speeder bike. Okay, that's an interesting include in Django Veers. I've occasionally seen it in Valor Trooper and three character lists, which are not as fast and not guaranteed, basically, to get the battlefield almost every time. This is another thing that is almost more useful for the cunning deck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're right, because it can move any dice off yeah. the special. Yeah, so I, I think he just wants to play cards because he, <laughs> he wants something to happen in this game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, speeder bike's interesting. I can see why people might play it just as a, a stall. Like they're sick of people passing on Django instead of rolling out, but it slows you down quite a bit. So, with the second chances, I'm guessing that if they decided that with second chances on both of them, I would take this would be the turn that I would try to get something done. Mm -hmm. So, there's a special showing on the Falcon and on uh, one of the Cunnings. Right. So do you have anything in your graveyard you think at this point, if you remember you're this deck, that is not Hyperloop that might be useful? In your, like you have a reversal in there or? No. So it, it yeah, there goes the second chance. Mm -hmm. Django showing some money, which I'm sure he's ecstatic about being able to go to seven. <laughs> <laughs> Seven resources, which pay for half of the deck, probably. Oh, okay, so you got the discard. Okay, your discard's starting to pile up, right? It is starting to pile up, but... I mean, there's no sense not doing it here, because mm -hmm. I can discard and then use the cunning to blow yep. it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cunning's got a, a lot of versatility. It's very meta-dependent meta on how good it is. Yeah. But I've been trying a couple decks out with it, and... Uh, it's just a lot, it, you know, a lot of fun to be that annoying <laughs> in most cases. The two cost is a bit, the rest of its sides are so-so, um, for sure, depending on how your deck strategy, but so the special is also fun. Activate the discard. Mm -hmm. uh, Get some cards. <laughs> yeah, he does, does have more than two, so. He loses a dug-in and an unpredictable. Critical. Yeah, you don't care about the dug-in. So I'm just, like, I'm wishing for one more damage here. Oh, and you got a one disrupt on a speeder bike? That's disappointing for him, yeah. So, yeah. No, I don't think he put enough damage there. Wasn't there only one shield on Beerus there? There was. Uh, or m maybe it was only two damage? I thought it was a three damage. Uh, it was a two. Yeah, yeah. Point two, yeah. So you got a two, f uh, let's see. Oh, but you only have one higher gun dice. You can't do that much. You can get rid of his last card. No, um, I, I can, coming. there's a, I get a resource from the, um, cunning. You can resource from the cunning, do three damage with a higher gun. Just thinking what, what you can use the second focus part for. Oh, nothing. Yeah. I mean, we already had the dice showing. So he claims the battlefield. 
We'll see if he thinks to use his speeder bike special. I can't remember if he does or not. Nope. He passed on that. Oh, sorry, I thought that one cutting dice was already It was, it was. You just spun your head to the same thing, just because you could. It was too focused. Well, I think I was considering whether I wanted to do another special. special. F11D, maybe? I guess that's equivalent, just more two for three instead of two for three. So, with... Getting the veers down, like I'm not, not in a terrible shape now. It was still difficult. Django rolls in so much damage. Okay, I'm obviously missing. What special did he use to kill veers? The thermal detonator? Thermal detonator, sorry. Yes, I was missing something big. It was not. <laughs> Not on the table at that point. That's why. You're Which kidding. actually, uh, I, we did didn't do the damage to. We didn't do the damage Django. to Django. That yeah, that's why I was like, what? just beers? Huh? That seems like a big wow miss in the game. You go <laughs> call him up. Rematch time. Oh no. Okay, I did. Ah, notice. there we go. All right. I was Delayed like, action. Like a really healthy Django for a big thing to not notice in a game. Mm -hmm. So I believe the second chance is when you retotal the. I mean, obviously, that, that information is lost, so that doesn't count as damage counted when you count up at the end. But you're still only sitting at 11, which is not even a poke, which is a tiebreaker. So he does, he goes first, so he rolls in Django. It's like, okay, whatever, I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. And it's like, yeah, what, what special do I have over there to take advantage mm -hmm. of? Yeah, I found it interesting you didn't roll in either do the backup muscle. He had two time wasters, right? He could have rolled in the speed of bike. Yeah. Or he could have rolled in the backup muscle. So again, that type of sometimes you just get in. No, no. He, he, he rolls in Django because, oh, I guess that's true, but he can he can, he can resolve. It. He can get damage off this round, right? But he can't anyway because he can activate Django in response. Potentially, but I could take, I could take, I could claim You could just claim straight up. So this is a chance for him to do some actual damage. Like he could do backup muscles in all the other turns mm -hmm. where he might not. But Django's always a free, like he could do damage with Django. Only if I activate a character, right? Only if you activate a character, that's true. You, you think you would just immediately claim? It's possible, it's not getting you anywhere. But I, I, w I could just roll the falcon. You have to roll the falcon in, yeah. yeah. Cutting away the... Uh, cutting to the speeder bike to get rid of the speeder bike. Yeah. And then activate... The activate is the part of the ability, right? The activate is part what, of the what's ability? The, what's the second... There's a second part to... You get rid of a dice. Oh, and, you, then, and then you can... You don't have to remove the dice. Right. The... And then the disrupt, which... <laughs> It's got to be a little depressing for you to see on the higher guns at this point when you really want damage. Yeah, he's got uh, plenty of... Plenty of money. So I do decide to go to hyperspace again. I'm not surprised he hasn't overwritten the DH-17 at this point. Uh, maybe he milled out his better stuff or discarded out his better stuff previously. He, but yeah, he's, he's got no have... reason to spend any more money, really. It's... Oh, I see the arm to the teeth. Oh, that There's an annoying finisher, too. In hand, so you know, once he's just waiting, he's just waiting to kill that last one, and he should be able to. And then he needs what? A couple more damage on one, and then just oh, a second chance. Okay, so he's got to get through that. All right, still a long way off on damage. Yeah, he's still got to. He's got to do uh, four, nine, fourteen damage to kill them both. Mm -hmm. That's uh, assuming that there's not going to be a scavenge. And there is an unimpressive roll by Django. Four out of five blanks. DH seventeen has two blank sides, but that's still pretty bad. So th this is where you, this is where it's really bad to kind of roll Django in because that lets me know that you know what, I I have a turn to be safe. Mm -hmm. What is that in there? Oh, 
this is what if this is a scavenge launch? Oh, you don't, you're not rich enough to launch Gary. No, it's one of the things I think I maybe should do is just a trigger the jump a few times so that I because you're I never yeah. am going to be at a point where I couldn't play launch bay if the opportunity arises. He had way more valuable cards than you did. I mean, to play out as we see, there's no no. But I'm also to that much getting money. close to the end of my deck, so mm -hmm. I go. There's four damage to uh, finish off the higher den. Don't really care. And can we not see his, or is he at the end of his? We can't see his. Oh. So I guess it's potentially um, is it two damage off the higher gun. Yeah, and another four off the falcon if you wanted to take it. Yeah, exactly. So six is pretty decent actually looking for you right now. I think an all in would be awfully nice. Because we haven't seen him play that many yeah. control cards, right? Like I imagine he still has unpredictables at a minimum unless he discarded them yeah. for a reroll that we didn't see. Which you would with unpredictable. <laughs> Sometimes people get pretty frustrated with that, and that's the first one to go. But... So I discard the, uh, the unpredictable to reroll to just see if I get anything better there. Okay, so you got the four, four naturally. Uh, so I don't know what you want those focuses for. I mean, you could focus to a three instead of a two, I think you're showing. No, I, I'd focus the other cunning to special for the. Uh, DH11. DH11. Uh, F11. 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 D. Yeah. There goes the four damage. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide what to do here. Yeah, get it off where you can. Because we've got plenty of blanks to trade. I, I must admit now, I played Destiny for about two months, very actively, and Backup Muscle has got to be one of my favorite cards to see. Puts you on such a clock, it's so cheap, it gets around everything. It's still not good, it's still not enough to play Surgical Strike, but maybe someday. Maybe yeah. someday the Surgical Strikes will go in the decks. If Spirit of Rebellion huh. brings some better, um, cheap... Look. You didn't... It looks like this. No, I, I'm guessing that I was concerned that he would take the initiative. Hmm. And, uh, so claiming the battlefield, especially when it gets this tight, is a very difficult decision. So you get the money. Not, uh, <laughs> not, not what you want to see. Any other side. Maybe not the special side. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, it's good because uh, I don't know if you were counting the dragons or not, but also getting the, the battlefield saves you having to go through three no, two shields, right? He, he used one. I think he used one. In he has one in his hand. Oh, never mind. As far as I can tell, looks like it. I guess. I think he discarded the last one. I don't know if he ever got to use it. He's showing five damage, including the special, because you only have one character, so you really don't have a choice. Which will pop the second chance. Yep. And it's all even, unfortunately. <laughs> so you lose one damage, but I mean, it does have to happen in multiple actions, though. So, mm -hmm. but the, the thing is, there's no real reason to just, yeah let it let it go. Yeah. Yeah, time is one reason, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's the focus. I notice you've gotten to the stage of the game where nobody's taking their money for the beginnings of the rounds. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I start to forget towards the end of the game. Oh, so do you. Yeah. And it's another one you probably have to... I'm just like, I'm going to pick this up and roll it again. <laughs> okay, three. He's going from three, so that might be tempting, depending on what he gets. Uh, yeah, you out-damaged him there. 
to you what you decide what past you decided yeah I mean oh you're scavenging yeah what do you think you're looking for here we'll find out another no, no, second. I just take a second chance well I thought yeah oh it's because you're running low on deck I mean you can just do it when this one pops too but no well so if I do it now then I could play this turn egg <laughs> yeah fair enough I don't want to do it after it's gone. That's enough time for Django to kill him. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's like I, I I I don't know how we would have to highlight in the audio every time I say sorry. <laughs> from the match. Ding ding, <laughs> and it won't be enough. No matter how many times, yeah. it won't right. be enough. So. This is where the look on Matthew's face was just like, I, I can't do this anymore. I concede. Uh, so, I mean, he could have just kept playing it and, and seen the soft it went to time. Um, but obviously he wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I couldn't bear to see that look on anyone else's face. So that deck, <laughs> that deck was retired. Retired. For good. 